Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number 32, and video 6 in the subsection on Laplace's equation. Specifically, I'm going to solve the radial equation. In video number 31, I moved Laplace's equation from rectangular coordinates to spherical coordinates. So what we did then was we moved the equation, or we broke the equation down using the method of separation of variables, so that we moved a partial differential equation to the product of three ordinary differential equations. So the three ordinary differential equations we needed to solve to solve Laplace's equation were the radial equation, the polar angle equation, and the azimuthal equation. So in this video, I'm obviously going to solve the radial equation. In videos 20 through to 23, I discussed Laplace's equation. I discussed and proved the first and second uniqueness theorems, and I also showed that Laplace's equation does not permit local maxima or minima. So in order to solve the radial equation, we need the method of Frobenius. And I've discussed that in, method in, excuse me, in videos 15 through to 19. And I've discussed the general method of solving power series, excuse me, differential equations using power series in videos 1 through to 14. So you can check there or start there if you're not familiar with what I'm going to do now. So I've written on the right hand side of your screen the radial equation. So we're talking about a function capital R, a function of small r, the radius. And the equation is small r to be squared times r double prime plus twice small r times r prime minus capital A times r is equal to zero. Capital A is the separation constant which we got from the method of separation of variables. Now for lots of reasons we write it as L outside of L plus one and I'm going to try and motivate why we do that in a moment. So I suppose in many ways you could just call it a, a clever or a neat way of writing the separation constant. So L is just going to be an integer. Now, in order to solve this equation using power series, we need to, like I said, use the method of Frobenius. And what we do here is we assume that the function R can be written as an infinite power series in the coefficients a sub n times R to the n plus x. And what we do is we plug that into the equation itself and we go from there. Now, before I discuss the method of Frobenius or solve it using the method of Frobenius, what I'm going to do is solve the equation just using the regular power series method, where this time the exponent in R is simply n rather than n plus x. So in order to plug this into the power series, excuse me, into the differential equation, we need to get the first and second derivatives. That's pretty straightforward. Now the differential equation says we need to multiply the second derivative by small r to be squared and the first derivative by twice r. So that's what we do. Now notice that each of these starts at n is equal to zero. And that now that we've multiplied by r squared and twice r, all of them have the same, excuse me, have the same power on the, uh, on the function r, namely r to the n. So that means is they all start at the same point and they all have the same exponent, which means we can use, use these to solve the equation. So on the top right of your screen in green, I've plugged them into the differential equation and factored out the power series itself. And this has to be equal to zero by the equation itself. So we assume that the infinite power series is non-zero because if that was zero, then everything would be zero and we just have a trivial solution. For the same reason, we assume that the coefficients are non-zero, namely the a sub n's. And you'll see later on that we also assume that a sub zero is non-zero. What that leaves is, uh, is the n, and it also leaves the a terms. So we have n squared minus n plus twice n is equal to a, which means we can solve for a. It's n outside of n plus 1. Now I'm just going to write the separation constant as L outside of L plus 1. So L is just a random integer. I'm hoping this will motivate us using the or calling the separation constant capital A L outside of L plus 1. So to go back to the original equation and solving it via the method of Frobenius. So we assume the equation can be written this time as the infinite sum of a to the n or to the n plus x. Once again, we need to get the first and the second derivatives. So we've gotten the first derivative here and the second derivative here. Now we need to multiply them by r squared and twice r respectively. What that mean is that 
the the we'll say the the zeroth derivative will start at n is equal to zero. So will the first derivative and so will the second derivative. And they will all have the same exponent in R, namely n plus x. So they all start at the same point and at the same exponent, which means you can plug them directly into the power series, or excuse me, into the differential equation without shifting indices. So that's what I've done on the top left of your screen. I factored out the power series just like I did earlier on, leaving the coefficients in the square brackets. Once again, we assume the power series is non-zero, so we don't get the trivial solution. Now, we would also like the, the power series to begin at n is equal to 0. So what I do is I plug n is equal to 0 into this equation, and we get equation 1. So equation 1 is a0 outside of x multiplied by x plus 1 minus the separation constant capital A. Now we assume that the 0th coefficient is non-zero. That means that x outside of x plus 1 must be equal to capital A, or L outside of L plus 1, as we saw earlier on. Now what we're trying to do, solving what's called, this is the indicial equation, but in solving the indicial equation, we're trying to come up with a value for x, or more than one value values for x. And at the moment, we don't have that. We have values for x multiplied by x plus 1. So now we do a small bit of a sleight of hand. I think this is very clever. So we rewrite it. So we have x outside of x plus 1 on the top right of your screen is equal to L outside of L plus 1. Multiplying the terms together, we can rearrange it such that we have x minus L, and that should be x squared here, x squared minus L squared. And if you look, and this is the sleight of hand, this is the product of x minus L and x plus L plus 1. Solving now, we get x1 is equal to L, and x2 is equal to minus L minus 1. So going back to the uh, the first equation. So we have our differential equation up here on the top right. Now to get the general solution for any differential equation, you do the following. Let's say it's a function of it's the the function is y. So the general solution y general is going to be a constant. Let's call it c1 times any particular solution. I'm just going to call it y sub one. And we need to add to that another constant multiplied by another particular solution, let's call it y sub 2. And that's how you get the general solution. So you need to get two particular solutions. Now note that our method of Frobenius says that we assume the function r can be written as r small r to the n plus x. But we're after getting two values for x, meaning we also have two solutions. We have two particular solutions. So the two solutions are or capital R sub 1, a function of small r, and capital R sub 2, a function of small r. Notice we just, I've just subbed in for x, so we have n plus l, and we have n minus l plus 1. These are our two particular solutions. So the general solution will be coefficients c sub 1 and c sub 2, multiplied by those, and then we add them using the superposition principle. And you'll see that in books, usually people will say uh, the general solution can be written in this form, what I'm, writing, or what I'm uh, covering in this green box. So you have just a constant c sub 1 times, uh, this should be r to the l, not, yeah, r to the l, c sub 1 times r to the l, plus c sub 2 times r to the minus l minus 1, or just move the r underneath the line to make the exponent positive. So this, of course, works at n is equal to 0. That's why it is the general solution. So that is how we use the method of Frobenius in order to solve the radial equation. And it assumes that you know how to use the power series method. And I've done all this in previous videos. So let's read look if you if you got confused. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.